In this video, let's talk about a static in-memory repository. Eventually in our course, we're going to use clean architecture in which we are going to have a use case layer that encapsulate all of the business logic. Then we're going to use dependency injection to inject the use cases into the controller. The controller will then use the use cases to populate the data and then does the rest of the things that we talked about before. When we use use cases, the data will be injected into the use cases. And that's a fairly complicated, but very, very useful architecture that we're going to learn in the later part of our course. For now, we want to learn the MVC framework. Therefore, in this lesson, I want to introduce a static in-memory repository where all of the data operations are encapsulated. So the data operations have create, read, update, and delete. So all those CRUD operations will be encapsulated in the static repository. And then the controller will use the static repository to retrieve data and populate the model. With this very simple repository, we can focus our attention on understanding the essence of the MVC web application framework. In this section, since we're working on categories, so I have prepared the in-memory repository for categories. Let's take a look. What I did is I added the categories repository inside the models folder. So this is just a simple class. Let's click into it. And we can see that this is a static class and it has a static list of categories because this is a in-memory representation of the data, right? It's in-memory data store. So therefore we're using a list to host all of the data. So these are the categories that I seeded the in-memory data store. Every time you run the application, you will have at least three categories to work with. And then the rest are the operations. As I mentioned, we have four different types of operations. We have create, we have read, we have update, and we have delete. This add method is the create. When a new category is passed in, first of all, we need to get new ID. This one comes in, it doesn't have an ID. So we need to figure out what is the maximum ID and then we plus one and we assign that to the category ID of this object. And then we add this category object into our categories list. So this is how my in-memory create operation is implemented. And then of course, this is very straightforward. When we get all of the categories, we just return categories list. Next one is we want to read category by ID. So the category ID is passed in as a parameter. We use link to get the category that has the same ID. If it's not now, we want to create a copy and then we return the copy. So this mimics a actual database. In a database, the data is stored in the file. That instance of data is never returned back to caller. The caller always gets a copy. In other words, the caller can never touch the actual data without running any statement. So that's why we're creating a copy. Otherwise, we just return this category. The caller, whoever calls the, the function, will be able to just update the properties of the category and that affects our in-memory data here. Right? That's why I'm creating a copy of the category. And of course, if the category is now, then I just return now. So therefore I have a question mark here to say this is nullable. Now it comes to the update. We have two parameters. First of all, we need to verify that the category ID that is passed in is the same as the category's category ID. And then I get the category to update. If it's not now, then I update each one of those properties. Here, I don't have a lot of properties. If I do, then I can use AutoMapper to map the properties to properties, which is very simple to use. You can do your own research and use that in your own code if you're interested. Last but not least, we have this delete category. And it's very simple. We use link to get the category. If it's not null, then we just remove from the list. So this is my static repository for categories. And in the rest of this section, we're going to use this static in-memory repository as the data store. And that's everything I'm going to cover in this video. I will see you in the next one.